Yeah. 
I'm going to remind everybody about the church school we had this morning. If you missed the church school this morning, you missed a good one. It was a good one. Uh, and I invite everybody out to the church school. You're missing a blessing. If you, and we're missing a blessing if you're not in our presence. Amen? Amen. Now it's intercessory prayer time. All right? Let us, let us uh, lift up this prayer list, but also lift up the ones that the Holy Spirit has placed on your heart. Because it is in a press, in accessory prayer time. So not just the prayer list. Pray for the young folk that got baptized today. That we don't open the back door so they can get away from here. Pray for the St. Joseph family that we can hold on and teach these young folk so they can grow in God's grace and they can end out in this old cruel world saying, I know a man that brought me through all of this and his name is Jesus. So this morning we're going to pray for Deacon Walter Allen and Sister Desiree Allen. Brother Samuel Ballinger and his lovely wife. Good morning, y'all. Good to see you. Good to see you. See what this we were talking about. You see? See, when they come home, when they come home, you 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 get a chance to say amen to what God is doing, not to what he has done. But what he is doing when you see the Ballinger sitting over there. Bless your heart, brother and sister Ballinger. Sister Alberta Bowden, I ain't got nothing to say about you this morning. You beautiful as always. Good to see you. Good to see you. 
Brother Terrence Brooks, Sister uh, Carolyn Campbell and DeAndre Campbell. And Sister Campbell still at her post, praying for her son. Oh, bless his holy name. Uh, Brother Herbert and Sister Blondina Caswell, Sherry Cox, Pastor Richard Curry, Sister Patricia Fairbanks and her mother, Thelma Flinnery, Brother Herbert Fitzpatrick, Brother Otis Glover, Sister Ivory Godwin, Sister, Sister Michelle Grooms, Brother Lyndon and Sister Tammy Hackley, the Hill family, Vanetta Jackson, the jail ministry, Sister Dorothy Johnson, Brother Adrian Limbrick, Sister Phyllis Luckett, Sister Daphne Mitchell, Sister Hilda Myers, and good morning to you, Sister Myers. Amen. Look at God, now I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this, this is an amen moment. Amen. Brother Bentley Porter, uh, Sister Brenda Sapp, Brother Earl and Sister Pat Shell, Deacon Ralph Smith and family, Brother Richard and Sister Easter Steed, Catrilla Stringfield, Dow Stringfield Jr., Salithia Stringfield, Brother Michael Sutton, uh, Sister Gwendolyn Thomas, Brother Bobby Tucker Jr., Sister Hattie Songbird Wallace. Good morning, Sister Wallace. <laughs> Sister Jane Zetta Wallace, Brother Quint Wallace, uh, Kadeet Williams, Linda Wright, Sister Otha Frazier. She's here on her post. Look at her. And Brother Foster Allen. Uh, he's got some things going on. Let's keep him lifted up in prayer. Father, we want to thank you this morning for Jesus. We just want to thank you. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And whatever we need in between that, he is all of that. He's the beginning and the end. And it's because of him we can stand up this morning and say thank you. Thank you for inviting us uh, to your fellowship this morning so we can hear from heaven. You invited us and you gave us the will to get up and to come. So we just want to say thank you. Forgive us now uh, of our trespasses, our sins against you and help us to forgive one another and to love one another. Help us to embrace this great fellowship of the St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. Then it can extend out from here. I pray that you will breathe on this prayer list as only you can. Touch it as only you can. We already see what you are doing because the ones we are praying for are sitting in our midst. And you brought them here this morning so we can see. And their life is a testimony to us that you are in control of everything. And we want to say thank you. No matter what it might look like, uh, uh, Lord, we know we, you got it. You are in control of everything, and we learned that this morning. So we just thank you this morning. Breathe on this list as only you can. And you, you give us what we need to say amen to your will. Help us this morning. Clear our hearts and our minds so we can hear from you this morning. We continue to pray for this prayer list. Breathe on the young folk. They got baptized this morning in the name of Jesus. Help us to help them by your word. Help us to teach them your word so they can grow up and be strong in trusting you with their lives. So just help us this morning. Breathe on the St. Joseph family as, as only you can. Add to your church as such should be saved as only you can. Then help us to come together as one body in Christ. Thank you for the fellowship this morning. Thank you for the church school this morning and the word that came forth. And breathe on our pastor, Lord. Because he has a word for us today that ties in with everything we talked about this morning. So touch him in a mighty way. Give us the ears and the heart. Open up our understanding so we can hear from you today. Bless St. Joseph. Breathe on us as only you can. And, and after the word is gone forth, my prayers and our prayers on one accord that you will save and add to your church 
and such should be saved. It's always our prayer on one accord in the master's name of him that was dead but now is alive forevermore, even Jesus our Christ. And let the church say together, amen and praise the Lord.
circumcision who worship God in the spirit rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh though I also might have confidence in the flesh if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh I'm more so circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin a Hebrew of the Hebrews concerning the law a Pharisees concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me? These I have counted lost for Christ. Yes, I indeed, yet I indeed also count things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish 
that I might gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which from God by faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. The grass withereth and the flowers faileth, but the word of God shall stand forever.
there's a hundred of y'all up there. I'm telling you, good Lord. Oh. This is a beautiful day that God has given us, starting off early and up to the morning service. If y'all missed the fellowship breakfast this morning, you missed a treat. They did a wonderful job. Been led by Deacon Hackley and Deacon Collins and, and then to all of the those that were helping him. I didn't see them all, but there was, uh, oh, oh, good Lord. Yeah, thank you. My man, Chef Jones, even had his outfit on. <laughs> yeah, Chief Jones, that's it. Boy, he was looking like chief of the culinary this morning, I'm telling you. Yeah. And uh, he hearing my vision and so forth, it was him that put his foot down and said, we're going to, I'm going to take the responsibility as the deacons to start to spearheading this breakfast quarterly. Not, not quarterly, was it quarterly? Quarterly. That's how we're starting off and then moving forward, moving forward. You know, and I says, you got it, Deacon, you got it. It's, it's just, you make it so easy when you have people that are working with you and not against you. It makes the work of God so pleasant, I'm telling you. you know, last week I was down in um, Tampa where y'all sent me to represent you to the state convention, and, and it was fantastic. It was, I, you know, I'm telling you the truth, I ain't heard so much hooping in all my life, you know. I said, good Lord, even the guys that would stand up and do announcements had to hoop and go to the cross where they sit down. <laughs> uh, you know, I was saying, my Lord, you know, you know, nine o'clock in the morning, that service, and then lunch, and then one o'clock up to about 3.30 or 4 uh, classes, and then dinner, and then coming back from 7 to, uh, to about 9.30, and then 10 o'clock to after midnight for midnight worship. Uh, boy, I mean, yes, the, it was rigorous as far as the agenda, but it was fulfilling, you know, because it, it appeared that they chose the exact people for the exact moments for every event because they were right on time. And then uh, they had me scheduled for the senior women's session, you know, which uh, I alternated uh, uh, Pastor uh, uh, Glenn Foreman over Zion Hope. Which uh, you know, it was fantastic. He did a fantastic job, and and uh, also there was you know several times they announced the, the fact that our uh, brother Foster Allen, you know, being the the new vice president of the uh, Brotherhood for the state of Florida, you know, so we have people that are here that are that are moving up in statue, you know, and, and all because Pastor Rim laid the footwork. None of this would have been possible if Pastor Rim had not laid the path out, you know. So you know, all we're doing is trying to walk in his tread marks so that uh, we'll be right in line with what his vision was and what God had planned for Black Bottom. And trust me, they know us by Black Bottom. I can set up and say, St. Joseph, you know, huh? Black Bottom, oh yeah, Black Bottom, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, you the new preacher in Black Bottom, yeah, you know, and uh, which was, was beautiful, it was just, just beautiful. Thank you all so much, uh, you know, it, you take care of me well, I didn't have to bring no brown bags, uh, nothing, you know, dinner was served deliciously, and everything was wonderful, the room accommodations were wonderful, and and uh, it, the whole session, the whole week, you know. So, and then we come back. Then the Brotherhood session yesterday morning, which was fantastic. And uh, and Deacon, not Deacon, but Foster Allen, Brother Foster Allen, you know, he was really standing tall and in his position leading the Brotherhood session. And then we had Deacon Grooms that was teaching uh, the session in there, and which the whole thing was fantastic, you know. And then this morning, we come early in the morning with, with uh, real food, real pork sausage and pork bacon and eggs and grits. You know, I, I guess I don't have to, to address Deacon Hackett now as Salam Aleikum, you know, because I, I was wondering whether he was going over to the other side with this no pork stuff, you know. 
the new Newark, <laughs> but everything was delicious. It was great. It was fine. Then we moved into our church school session, and there's something great about studying the Word of God and fellowshipping together and eating and so forth. It just made the whole experience so beautiful, and 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 I just pray that one day I can see Saint Joseph. All of us, as we are studying the Word of God and eating and drinking coffee and embracing each other and ignoring the wiles of the devil while we're doing it, you know. And, and then we come down to our uh, morning service and beautiful two young babies being baptized, you know. I'm saying, Lord, what a beautiful, beautiful day. Your your arms are around St. Joseph, and God, it is so wonderful knowing that you are blessing us the way that you are. And, and I know Sister Schuyler, I've been giving her sort of a, a fit because last week uh, I switched sermons in midstream. You know, by the time that she was writing stuff down, then I get up here, then I preach something else. And then we had, I told Reverend uh, uh, Gibson, being that it was the fourth Sunday, you know, and, and so he said, well, you know, I didn't know I was supposed to preach, whatever, and I, well, you know, if you want to, you can. Then I go back to my office, and I'm putting my book up, and then I looked, and I says, Lord, this looks like a sermon that's coming from the church school lesson. Maybe you were saying something here. So that's when we decided to go ahead with me preaching, even though the fourth Sunday but then the scripture and everything was already intact, you know, and I'm saying, okay, thank you, Father. You know, that just confirms the fact that that's what you want. And so that's where we are up to date as far as how God has his hands on St. Joseph, how he's blessing St. Joseph, how he is growing us in Black Bottom, and we need to recognize that it's he that's doing it, not us, because none of us have the wherewithal to know how to make all of this come together like this. Just like, you know, just a hand going inside of a, a silk glove. It's just so, it's just so amazing in how he does it. So here we are this morning. And this morning, we want to talk about beware of evil workers. Beware of evil workers. Which is coming out of uh, Philippians chapter 3 verses 1 and uh, it was 1 through 9 that we talked about but we're just going to do 1 through 1 through 4 amen really 2 through 4 2 through 3 I'll get it in a minute 2 and 3 okay beware of dogs Beware of evil workers. Beware of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Father, we thank you so much for we know that you are in control not only of our lives, but you are in control of even your church and even of the service of your church. You decide what you want preached, what you want taught, and God, we thank you for that, and we, we, we ask you to strengthen us so that we can humble ourselves to follow your leadership. Bless us today as we go into the word and see what you are giving us as a warning and being, oh, being beware of evil workers. Thank you for what you're doing. Forgive us of our sins. Bless us now that we can submit ourselves to you and then that we can, we can walk away and resist the devil and allow your strength to permeate within our lives. Bless us this morning. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Give an honor to Reverend Gibson, who's doing a great job in supporting this ministry, to the deacons of this great church, 
bless you all to the deaconesses as always you're doing a wonderful job reaching out to young women young ladies pray that uh, that will continue because it's necessary in these days and times they need to see what it looks like to be a Christian woman that's what they need and you're doing a great job in and in, in preparing that and presenting that so they can see what it's like because if not the world has got a picture for them the, the hip-hop gender you know uh, gracious what basketball wise football wise Atlanta broads I mean uh, uh, I forget that Atlanta something get going okay uh, wives that's right, Atlanta wives there you go all that stuff that's not teaching our girls what it's like to be a godly woman amen so uh, I thank you sister deaconesses under the leadership of sister Ruby Smith <laughs> to this great choir as always you make it so easy to 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 to, to preach and to deliver God's word because you set the mold so so beautiful. To the musicians, the director, to ushers, nurses guild, to the hospitality ministry, to the uh, sound system, and I see my little young engineer. I did see him a minute ago. Where did he get off to? Yeah, he's running things. I can tell you that because it sounds so good this morning. So. I know he's in control of it. Thank you that for little brother Tucker. To the young people that were baptized this morning. Oh, it's so beautiful that you're in the arms of God now. That God is beginning your walk in a new life that you will never regret. You know, praise God for you. I am wonderful. I am. I'm so excited. I. You know, you guys won't let me have a low spirit. I'm telling you, because every time I look around, there's something that's lifting my spirits and, and just keeping joy in my heart. It is so wonderful being a pastor. It really is. I, it is. Well, thank you for doing what you do. It makes it so joyful. And then to St. Joseph, my family, God bless you. God bless you. And then to my darling wife, who is so special in my life. And I don't know whether y'all know it or not, but this woman loves some E.C. Gregory. Yes, sir, buddy. Yeah. We, we were in church yesterday to a funeral, and she was sort of like halfway in my arms because I was sitting there with her. And, she was saying to me, even in the church, I said, oh, look at this. So, you know that made me beside myself. <laughs> She's so special, so special. Beware, beware of evil workers. We began that conversation in, in church school this morning. Because God is, he's trying to keep us aware and keep us cognizant, keeping us alert to the fact that Satan is not going to let us alone. He's not, especially when you're growing to the point where you're recognizing him as God, recognizing Jesus as God in the flesh, and you're doing what your heart is giving you the direction to do to lift him and to praise him. Satan hates that. And, and the more that you grow and the more that you become part of what God is looking for, the more angrier that his imps, his demons, his, his workers, the, 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 the stronger that hatred becomes. And they come up with all kinds of devices to try to disturb that. They're going to tell lies on you. Don't think that you're, going, that you're free of that. Just because you're a child of God and because you're humbling yourselves and because you're studying and because you're coming to church and because you're loving each other, don't think that 
that, that, that he's going to walk away. He's going to more so come close as he can. But he knows he can't touch you. He knows that he cannot have you, that you belong to God, and God will not release his ownership on us. But he does every single thing that he can do to try to displease God by our actions. Be aware that that's happening. Be aware that, that your enemies you can see and you expect. So the Bible teaches us beware of the one that you lay your head in the bosom of at night. Which the Bible says that the closest friend that you think you have, that's where your spiritual bewareness began. Not that you hold your friends off. That's what, not what God is saying. He's not saying cut them away, be cold toward them. That's not what he's saying. What he is saying is expect anybody to hurt you and betray me when you're comparing them with me. Because I will never hurt you. I will never betray you. I, I will never set you up for failure. But friends and family and, and especially your enemies will do that. But what God is saying to us, he is saying that the battle is not with flesh and blood. It's not that I've got to protect myself against you or you got to protect yourself against me. The Bible tells us that the war is above all of us. It is principalities. It is high places. It is spiritual warfare. And that's why we need him the most. Because we can't see in the spiritual world. You know, even right now, and praise God, we can't see it. According to the scripture, uh, the, the imps are all around here. They're, they're all around. They're trying to get as much information as they can so they can attack. They're not God, so they, they don't have the awareness of what's going to happen next and the future. They don't have that information. So they have to plot and look around and get close and try to get as much information as they can. They, they, they are the best recon that could ever come about. For those that are not in the military, that meant that they can find out stuff that's needed to know before attack is, is about to happen. They are the best at it. They being demons and devils and, and all that are of the spiritual world that are against God. So God is saying to us, beware of evil workers. Evil workers are people who desire to feed Jesus and his church. Simple as that. Those are evil workers. They're not after hurting you. They, they could care less about whether you're hurt or not. That's not the intent. That's why when people that you know say things and they hurt you, they themselves become like confused when they even do it because the fight is not really against you, and they all stop and think, why did I say that? I, you know, and that may have happened to some of us. You know, why did I go through those lengths to, to hurt that person? That, I don't have nothing against them, you know. But that's, that is Satan setting the stage to do those things to discourage us so that we won't be the people that God is wanting and needing for us to be. And so God says clearly, beware of the evil workers. We face a powerful army whose goal is to fight against the plan and purpose of the church. That's where the fight is. The fight is with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and the gates of hell. That's the fight. And the Bible says to us, as Jesus was giving instructions to his disciples before he left, he says, now this thing is going to be a fight. And he says that I'm looking for my church to be the aggressors. See, the Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail, will not stand up against the attacks of the church. We should be militant believers attacking the gates of hell. Well, what does that mean, preacher? I'm not one to protest. I'm not one to carry axe handles. I, 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 my heart is not even set up for violence. That's not what God is talking about. When we submit ourselves to God and our attention is on doing what God is instructing us to do, we are fighting against the gates of hell because hell is trying to stop it. 
The gates of hell is trying to get us to do things that are opposite of what God wants us to do. So to be children of God is saying that we are fighting against the gates of hell that's trying to prevent it. And it's not our fight. It's not our fight. And the more that they see the presence of Jesus in your life, the stronger the fight. If you are a, a weak baby Christian that's really not causing any kind of disturbances, you're not involved in influencing other people, you're not set to be teaching others about the love of God, you're just floating along waiting for the rapture to come and so forth. Uh, the devil is not that interested because, you know, you are just you. You're just one. But the moment that you start growing and the Lord Jesus Christ can be seen clearly in your life and others are watching on, watch out. That's when you're going to start to seeing the gates of hell causing disturbances in your life to bring you discouragement, for, for you to lose interest in what God is saying because you start to having to pay more interest on what the problem is in front of you. God says, don't look at the circumstances, children. Don't look at them because those are the obstacles that the gates of hell is putting in front of you. Look at me. Submit yourself to me. And I will cause whatever that circumstance that's in front of you to be nothing but visions or, or things that you can just walk right on through that won't harm you or hurt you at all. That's what God says to us. But it's got to be with God fighting our battle. He doesn't need our help. He doesn't need our help. Submit ourselves. Submit yourselves to God. Lord, be the God in my life. Everything that I do, allow it to be from your instructions. That's submitting yourself to God. Do it every day in your secret closet. Or just simply when you wake up, when you turn around, put your foot on the floor. Lord, thank you for waking me up. Be Lord in my life today. Do that every day. That prayer ain't but two sentences. Do that every single day. And all of a sudden, guess what? Your sinful mind will hear it. And you'll start to making sense out of it and saying, well, you know what? That is what I want to happen. I want Jesus to become Lord. I want him to give me the instruction. Every time a situation is there, immediately, Lord, what would you want me to do? How do you want me to handle it? And God will walk us and carry us through it every single time. He wants us to be victorious because with us being victorious, he is lifted. He is made victorious. He is lifted up so that others can see his glory. When we believe in Christ, these, these evil workers become our enemies. And they try every device to turn us away from Jesus and back to sin. That's where he wants us, the evil one. He wants us back to where we once were. And that's what he uses. If you ever notice, he don't bring no new stuff up. If you never did crack ever in your life, he won't try to trick you with a crack pipe because that don't mean nothing to you. You know, but if you were a connoisseur of cavassier, you know, that may be what he places in your path an hour or two before it's time for you to preach to get you off course to where you don't even know whether you're preaching Jesus or preaching the label on the bottle. Those are the antics that he that he chooses things that, that has been in our life that God has pulled us from and, and that he carries us back to it. That's why it's so, it works every time. That's why it works. Because that's something that our lives have become used to. Three things. First one, beware of the dogs. Beware of dogs. Two, beware of evil workers. And three, beware of the mutilators. The mutilators. I'll explain what all that means. 
Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, and beware of the mutilators. Now, number one, dogs, in, in the scripture, uh, th that's a bad thing. I know today that's a, that's a good thing. You my dog or whatever, you know, all that. In, in today's language, that, that means you're my best friend or you my running buddy. You know, you're somebody that, 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 that I'm down with. But in biblical times, it was an awful thing to be referred to as a dog. As a matter of fact, that's what Jews call all Gentiles, dogs. That it was like a low-grade, degrading thing for them to, to talk about. And, 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 and so whenever they wanted to insult people, they always equated them as dogs. And so when they looked to us, because we were Gentiles, they immediately referred to as dogs. Why? Not because they were trying to incite a fight. It was more to discourage, to degrade. When a person has been degraded and has been insulted, they get a spirit of not wanting to do better. And they get to believing what the, what people are saying. If I'm a dog, I guess I'm no good. I guess that, that's it. Not, there ain't no way I can get past that. That's who I am. So I'll just continue doing the stuff that I'm doing. There's no need to work for something better because I can't be better. That's a lie out of the, out of the pits of hell. And, and especially when it comes to our young people, you are priceless. You are so priceless. That, that, that God has a message and that he says for us to, to bother with young babes, for us to discourage them, for, for us to attack them, for us to do anything to them other than to embrace them and love them, he says it is better for you to take a brimstone, which is like a cement block, and tie it around your neck and go jump off in the deepest part of the ocean. That's what God says. That's how bad he hates those who try to bother with babies. That's another reason too, if you got to go to prison, don't go for, for bothering with children. If you go to prison, I heard this now, I don't know this for a fact. This, this, this is what I heard through the grapevine. That if you've been found guilty for harming a child, hurting a child, molesting a child, killing a child, boy, your stay there is like miserable it's rough, huh? It's rough. So, so even the evilest of mankind know that it is something that should not be done. But, but God wants our babies to know that they're precious. Not to be saying that because you live on this side of the railroad track, you won't be nothing. Yes, you will, children. You have the opportunity to be whatever that God has in store for you to be. Don't let nobody, I don't care who it is, discourage you and tell you you cannot do it. God wants you to know that he has brought you into this world and he's brought you into this world with a specific purpose for you. It was by no accident. God is the one who gives life. There's no way that mom and dad could have had an accident. God orchestrated it. And so if you are here in this world, God has a plan for you. So turn your hearts to God. Start to looking at God. Show me, prepare me, open my eyes to where you want me to go. God will start to doing that. He will start to setting the stage even at a young age. He will do it. And then the Bible says even as you grow older and you start to walk in a way to test some of the things of the world, God says eventually I'll bring you back to where you were. So, so it, it is important that at a young age, you start to recognizing that God is in control of your lives and you are not dogs. You, you, you are not the drudge of this world. You are not the forgotten of this world. You are not those that, 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 that means nothing to this world system. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You know, I grew up in the in the hills of North Carolina. And my wife tell you, you're so poor. I mean, you know, even as I said, you know, like when you drive back home, you get so like a, a feeling of, oh, I'm, I'm back. Even today, when I drive back in the area where I was born, I show her the old house and look, and it's like 
dredge. It's like, my God, it's so poor and so downtrodden. And even in my mind, I, I can't even imagine how people are even still surviving. But, but they are. And, and, and I thought even as a young child that that would be all that I would ever know. But, but, but look, look what God has done. I mean, God has taken my life and done things with it that's indescribable. You know, uh, amen, amen. My father said that I would never amount to anything, that I would be in the penitentiary before I was 18 years old. Prove them wrong. I hold seven degrees, three of them being doctors. God did this. As he, as a matter of fact, the majority of that is he led St. Joseph to pay for. <laughs> you know, so thank you all for that. Thank you all for that. But God can take the poorest of us from areas that could amount to, I mean, gracious. He's just wonderful. I can't describe it no further than that. He's just wonderful. And, and if you could see the, the, the line, my family line and so forth, as my, my wife sees sometimes and just shakes her head, you know, because it could have been, I could have been there where God chose to grab me and move me where he wanted me to be. And to show that he's able because Discouragement can really, really bring broken hearts. And I don't want our young babies to be discouraged by the works of the devil, by demons, by unclean spirits, uh, because they're all over the place in, in, in their music, in their teaching, even in school today. We, we, we are voting for people that are allowing foolishness to enter into our school system, you know, teaching children that you know, if you don't like being a girl, that's okay. You can be a boy completely. You know, <laughs> you know, you don't need uh, mom and dad. You know, all you need is loving parents. You know, not understanding that both are, are necessary in a godly, a godly home the way God has it planned. You know, that's what the imps, that's what the devil, that's what his followers are trying to do with our young people. With, with, with even us as we vote for those who come into office who, who lift up that mindset. Dogs, morally impure. There's nothing that they won't do. Nothing that they, they won't consider. That's not who we are. That's not who God has, has set us aside to be. God has called us to be greater than that. But it's only by his ability and his strength. And he can do it if we would allow him to do so. So God says to us that don't be, don't, 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 don't allow them to move you in that direction because they hate us because we look like and act like Jesus Christ. No more than that. There's nothing else in your life that there's hating. It's because you look like and act like Jesus that they come and they bring this discouragement. Trust the fact that all you have to do is what God has given us instructions. Out of James chapter 4, he says, Submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. The second thing, beware of evil workers. Now, Evil workers can be saved or unsaved. They can be Christians that, that have been caught up by the uh, uh, demons that have influenced them, by the devil that's influenced them, you know, that because they do, they do attach themselves to those who are weak enough to allow them to do so, you know. And then they bring that attitude into the body into the body. It's like a Trojan horse. Y'all remember the story of the Trojan horse? You know, this, 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 this Troyes uh, uh, people that could not be conquered, and so they wanted to, to, to take over the city. It was all fenced in. There was no way they could get in, so they decided to build this big, huge wooden horse, give them as a gift. But inside of that horse, they had men, fighters, that were hidden in the horse. 
And so when they woke up one morning, they saw this beautiful gift outside the gates. And they say, oh, for me? So they opened the gate up and they drug the, the wooden horse, this big, huge wooden horse inside of the city and then closed the gate. And they were celebrating, you know, that night. And so in the middle of the night, after they had gotten drunk and went to sleep and everything else from celebrating their new gift, these men came out of the Trojan horse and took over the city. So Satan does the same thing even today with Trojan horses, which means that his demons attack, attaching themselves. They cannot ever have you. You belong to God. God says, I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. I will always be with you. So by choosing Jesus, you have locked yourself in as being a child of God. You don't have to ever worry about that again. But you have to beware of evil workers of coming in and attaching themselves to you because then you bring that all of that, the attitude, the everything that Satan has that he wants into the body, like a Trojan horse. And then he starts to infiltrate him. And they start putting stuff in your mind like, you don't have to like that pastor. He ain't no good. You just don't know all the things about him. Uh, why, 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 is, why is the choir singing those kinds of songs? I don't, he starts to putting all these things in your mind, and the next thing you know, you've got a whole big mess going on in the midst of the fellowship. And then Satan has accomplished his act. Got nothing to do with the believers. The believers don't understand that. They're not aware of it. But Satan has taken his victory with evil workers. That's why God is saying to us not only to be aware of dogs, but be aware of the evil workers. They are unbelievers who are working against God. That, that, that's one group that are evil workers because we have church members also that are not born again. They, 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 they looking for something, came and gave their hand to the preacher, but not their soul to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know? And so that, that's one group that are listed in the beware of the evil workers, but then there are those who are truly born again who have, because of something that they, they dislike themselves, allow Satan to address them, and they feel comfortable because it agrees with what they think things are. And so now they have become an agent of the devil and don't even recognize it. And so they bring all of this in to the body of Christ unawares and cause all kinds of disturbances. They are those who are believers who work against God, who work against the church, work against what Christ wants. And so they are disturbing the ministry of Christ. They plot against the plans of the church. No matter how the church goes, they plot against it. It, it. it don't sound right to me. I don't want that. Even though the, this is what the church is saying, they're constantly being in disagreement. Brings about a conflict within a body. And when the conflict comes in, it's like leaven coming into bread. It's like yeast that causes bread to rise. It, it just takes over, and the next thing you know, you just got battles all in the midst of the congregation. Nobody is thinking the same way. Nobody is going in the same direction. Everybody is doing what they think is right, and there's just conflict. That's what evil workers do. That's why God says in his word, he says, beware of evil workers. Beware of them. Be cautious of them. Be careful. Recognizing that Satan is using them. Pray that, that, that they will open their hearts and recognize that, that, that Satan has taken over and, and allowing them to be disturbances within the body. So he says for us, beware of that. And then, thirdly, Beware of the mutilators. There are those that will come in, believers and unbelievers, that will start to saying, you got to mutilate yourself to please God. Back in the day, they said that to be a believer, to come into the church, you had to first circumcise yourself. What they said is that you had to be a Jew first, simply. You had to be a Jew before you could be a believer. In other words, when Christians, when, when Gentiles were coming in, 
They said that you had to be a Jew, and then once you were a Jew, proselyted as a Jew, then eventually uh, you can work yourself in and become a Christian. Jesus says it's by faith in him alone, by nothing else. And so that was one way that they were causing mutilations. But then let's look at today. Today they're, they're saying things like, you know, you need to fast. You need to, to, uh, to afflict your body. You know, when you're fasting and when you're living without something or you're pushing something aside in your life, you're mutilizing your spirit, you're mutilizing your body, you're causing all kinds of issues. So they're saying that you must, must afflict yourself so that God will pay attention to what you are requesting of him. The Bible tells us that God says that I don't want you mutilating yourself. I'm not looking at how you can bring conflict against yourself. What I want you to do is know that I am God and that I am all and all in your life. All I want you to do is turn your life in my direction. Don't worry about all this fasting and fasting and fasting because you're doing it without no kind of purpose. And, and even if we try the way the Bible says it, we, we don't do it right because we tell others that we're doing it. The Bible says that if you do fast, that you do it in secret. But then you have churches stand up and say, okay, church, everybody, we're going to fast for this month. Already you are outside of the instructions of the Bible because you're telling everybody what they're doing. God says that I don't want you mutilating yourselves trying to gain favor from me. I want you to know that it's because of the finished work of my son Jesus Christ that I granted you salvation. It is because of his finished work on Calvary's cross that I have given you life and life eternal. It's because of what I have done and what I have done alone, God says, that grant you all these privileges of being a believer. Not because you are able to afflict yourselves or not because you are able to gain any favor from me. He says to us that know that I am God. Submit yourselves unto me. Trust me that I'm able to take control of your life. Don't think about doing something to yourself causing conflict, mutilating yourself so that I will turn my head and show some favor. He says, I do not do that in any fashion. My eye is on my son, Jesus Christ. And if you want to find favor from me, turn yourself to my son. And as I see my son, I will see you. But if you're not with my son, and as I'm looking at him, I cannot see you. So I don't care how badly you're mutilating yourself on the side, you're doing it for no reason and no cause. So God says, beware of the mutilators. Beware of those who would cause you to, to turn away from the truth, which is that he died for us. He says to us clearly in his word, in, in, in verse 3, he says, have no confidence in the flesh. None. Flesh can't do anything to please God. Nothing. It's about our trust and our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our trust and our belief that in God's word he said that I sent my son into this world. That I sent him in this world so that he could show you that my laws could be kept. And Jesus did. The Bible says as he walked on this earth over 2,000 years ago, that he did so facing the same temptations that we all face on a daily basis. But the Bible said he faced that temptation with no sin. He did not yield to sin. But even still, they hated him. They hated him. He was here to reach out to the lost. They hated him because every time they look around, he was partying with the sinners. Every time they look around, he was drinking wine with, with, with the festivities and so forth. He was just a partying nut. Matter of fact, they call him a wine bibber. They hated him. And because of it, they took him to Calvary. They took him to Calvary. They didn't know that they were falling into the trap that God had set. Because that was God's intention before he even sent him into this world was to take him to Calvary. They fell in the trap. 
the Bible said if Satan knew that this was the plan of God, that he would have never allowed Satan to go to allowed Christ to go to the cross if he had known. But he didn't know it. He thought that he had won a victory. That he I finally got him. Back in Moses' day, he tried to kill them all by killing the young babes, young boys. That didn't work. Then King Herod tried to kill all the boys that were two years and younger. They didn't catch him there, didn't get him. So when they took him to Calvary, Satan says, I got him. I won. I got him. And they nailed him to that cross. And I'm sure that he was rejoicing. Matter of fact, he came out of hell most likely just to watch the festivities. But they nailed him to that cross. And the Bible said Jesus didn't say a mumbling word. And he didn't say a mumbling word because he knew that he had his eyes on each one of us who he knew needed saving. Because that's why he came into this world. And so they nailed him to that cross. Hands and his feet. And then he warned them. He says, don't lift me up. If y'all lift me up, we'll draw all men unto him. And, and that's a, give me just a second here. Don't miss the scriptures. We add a word that's not there. You know, we say, uh, if Jesus said, if I'm lifted up, I will draw. That's not what he said. He says, if you lift me up, the lifting up process, he says, will draw. What Christ is saying with the idea of him being lifted, that action will draw people to him, which gives us that same hope today. When we live a life being, being beware of the dogs and, and the evil workers and the mutilators, when we are walking in the way of Christ, we are lifting him, and by his being lifted, he's drawing others to him. But they messed around and lifted him. You know, and, 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 and even then, I love this one part that's in this whole process, that when the, when the centurion, who was a Gentile, an unsaved man, I like to call one of the devils, because he was unsaved, even the devil walked and looked up and said, stop, and says, my God, this must be the Son of God, because no other man could die this way. Even in the way he was dying showed that he was God in flesh. That the devil himself had to profess the fact that God was dying on that cross that day. But he went into, into the inner sanctum. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews. Took his own blood. He didn't trust angels to take it up to glory. He didn't trust anybody. He himself, according to the book of Hebrews, took his own blood, went up into the Holy of Holies, went into the Holy of Holies, and sprinkled the blood on the mercy seat. Now that itself says that he's God because, listen, only a high priest or a certain one who is anointed could go into the Holy of Holies and live and walk out. Jesus did it without even hesitating. He did it without even pausing. The Bible says that he went into the Holy of Holies with his own blood and sprinkled it on the seat. It's like he dropped the mic and said, this is it. Because the Bible said rather that he, as he was on the cross, he, he said to everyone that was listening, it is finished. It is finished. The work that my father has sent me to do, it's done. I don't need you to add nothing else to it. I don't need you mutilating yourself. I don't need you depriving yourself. I don't need you bringing conflict on yourself. He says it is finished by what I have done. All I want you to believe is that I did this for you and receive it into your life personally. And then he died. He died a death that again is a whole nother sermon and topic because he only have died this death. And he was taken off of that cross and placed in a borrowed tomb because they hadn't even prepared a tomb for him. They took him off and put him in this tomb of Joseph Arimathea who gave him the resting place. And there his body this is important. His body was there for three days and three nights. But the Bible said that he, Jesus, was in the heart of the earth. 
reconciling things back to God. All the stuff that Adam had done and given up God's creation to, to Satan, whatever all of that was, Jesus reconciled all that back to the Father. Showed himself to those that were in hell, saying to them, this is the one who the old prophets that you killed talked about. Here I am, vindicating them. And then those that were in Abraham's bosom, which was across from the, from the gulf. Now all of this is in hell. Okay, and he said to them, the prophets, here I am, the one that you preached about. Here I am. And, and he did a whole bunch more stuff that's not recorded. But then, on the third day morning, after he had done everything that God had sent him into this world to do, the Bible said, to prove positive that he had done a completed job, that God woke him from the dead, bodily and alive. And let me say to some doubters, who believe that there may be a sin that you've committed that's left out there undone, that you're carrying around guilt on yourself thinking that I know God could never forgive me of that. If Jesus had overlooked any sin, and sin, even one, that God would not have been a just God to have woken him from the dead. Get rid of that guilt that you have and recognize that God has already forgiven you for that. Walk in the newness of life. Walk in a life that is full of righteousness, knowing that you are a child of God and there's nothing that can ever remove you from the love of God. But on that third day morning, God kissed his son. Find that in uh, Psalm number two, last verse. God kissed his son and woke him from the dead. Ro rose him now bodily and alive, bodily and alive. And right now, he's sitting on the right hand of the Father, interceding still for us. As we are messing up now, he is saying to the Father, it's okay, my blood has covered that, it's okay. Constantly, constantly interceding for us. But here's the good news to those of us that are his children. He's coming again. He's coming. Some, he's going to come. Others, he's going to pull us up at the rapture. Either way, he's coming for us. He's not sending nobody for us. He's coming for us. The question is, are you going to be ready to receive him? If you died this moment, would you be in his arms? Or would you wake up, or how the Bible put it, lift your eyes in hell? Which would it be for you? Which would it be? That's a question you've got to answer for yourself. As we stand, as we stand. If there's anybody here today who don't know Jesus in the pardon of their sin, the invitation is extended to you. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, amen, amen, amen. All right, amen. Amen, 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 amen. You want to go? Amen, amen, amen. Yes, Lord, yes. Amen. Look at here. Come on. Amen. Amen. Oh, God. Amen. 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 Whoa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There may be someone here today who is born again and know that they are without a question of a doubt, but don't have a church home. You may not know that God has commanded us, also in the book of Hebrews, to not forsaken ourselves 
like the heathen do, not, not, not assembling ourselves, not, not being a part of a fellowship or congregation. God says that, that he commands us to be affiliated or part of a congregation so that we can grow and know about him. If you don't have a church home, St. Joseph is one of the finest places that you could ever be. I invite you to come and have this as your church home. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Hey, man, why don't you come? You may be seated. Amen, amen. Don't tell me God is not smiling on Black Bottom. Amen, amen, amen. I thank God for everything that he is doing. He is so wonderful and so precious, and his promises are all yes and amen. That's what he is promising. I believe now that we're going to come to a point of uh, offering to where we are worship and giving. Amen. Let, let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you give us to, to give, give back. Pray now, God, that you would fix our hearts to be cheerful givers. Bless us as only you can. And Lord, we'll give you the glory and give you the praise for what you do. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all of your people shall say together, amen and praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for what you have done. Thank you for touching hearts. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. ministry. Good morning, Pastor Gregory, pulpit, St. Joseph, members and friends. My name is Sister Deborah Thompson, and at this time I'd like to acknowledge anyone worshiping us with us today that are visiting. If you are visiting, would you please stand and give your name and your church affiliation.
to thank you for worshiping with us today. Your presence has made our worship experience the greater. I would like to let you know this is a church where everybody is somebody and Jesus Christ is Lord, ever, soul, and black bottom. Thank you all for coming and please come again. Thank you. I'd like to leave you with this thought. Evil people don't understand justice, but those who follow the Lord understand completely. Amen. They're on their way. Amen. That's what I like to hear. But God has been so wonderful. I'm just without words to express how wonderful he truly is. And, and our prayers are being answered. He's hearing the desires of our heart and and St. Joseph is growing by that. The fellowship is loving each other. I'm, I'm just, you know, it just feels so great to be a part of the fellowship. You know, you, you come and there's love that's just permeating all around. And, and that's because God is doing it. That's, that's not you. According to the Bible, flesh is not able to understand that kind of love. That's why it requires him who lives within each one of us. It's, it's because of him that lives in us that we're able to demonstrate that love toward each other. And I keep praying that we keep our eyes and sight on that fact, knowing that it's him and not us. And when it comes to our, our families, we we'll recognize that as we learn how to love each other in that way, that he will do the same thing within our families. You know, Tell God to sometimes, brothers, to... Give me the heart to really love my wife like you want me to. And, and God will start to doing wondrous things within your relationships, within your marriages. You know, same thing for wives. Although in the Bible, he don't necessarily tell y'all to love your husbands. He only tells the husbands that. He tells y'all respect them. Yeah, well, that's, that word in the Bible means respect. Submit yourselves to to your husband, simply says to respect. And notice something he says to your own husband. He doesn't just say submit yourselves to your husband, you know, because he doesn't want you submitting to a husband across the aisle. Yeah. He wants you submitting to your own husband. You know, it's the funniest thing, ladies, that that your husband can say, uh, this nail on the wall is brown. And you all will say, no, it's not. It's more of a tan color. I, I don't, you know. But then Jim down the street can come by one day and say, you know what? That's a brown nail you got, you know. Well, you know what? I never thought about that. It is brown, you know. <laughs> it, it, it's, just, it's just funny how that, that, that works. Well, but God says to us, he says to, 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 to ladies, he says, submit yourselves to your own husband. And, and, and that's the thing that, that we have to learn is that stop fighting, stop fighting the feeling. Somebody had a thing about that one time, fighting the feeling. God put as a curse into the heart of the woman to always wanting to usurp the authority of your husband. That's something that he's put in you. In other words, what he is saying to you, recognize it, admit it, because only then can you know that you need his help to get past that. It is your natural position to want to and need to usurp his authority. That's the curse that God has placed on you. Use that one. Oh, thank you. That's Bible. That's Bible. Yes, ma'am. To the husbands, he threw another wrench in the, in the thing. He says to the husbands that the curse is going to be put on you to where you want to dominate your wives. He says, what I told you to do is have dominion over creation, not your wives. Don't miss that, guys. Not over your wives, over creation. 
But because of the curse that's in us, we want to dominate our women. We want to dominate our wives. You know, we want to show all this, whatever that is, is in us. And all we do is disturb what God is putting into motion. Amen? All right. Okay, I'm through with church school. All right. Hey, Sister Hope, Sister hey, Hope. Hey, Pastor. <laughs> hey, good afternoon, St. Joseph. Yes. Pastor, it's a beautiful Sunday. It's Isn't a beautiful it day. Though? I told you Couldn't that. Couldn't be no better, Pastor. Oh, oh my. Yeah. Make okay. tears come to your eyes, doesn't okay, it? Okay, I already have <laughs> cried, okay? Oh, bless you, Jesus. Okay, Lord, get me an order. All right. right. All right, in Jesus' name. Pastor, I'm going to start with the family first, okay? okay? Amen. Amen. Let's start with the head of this household. All right. Pastor, we are bringing you Mr. Uh, Brother Terry Mitchell. Terry Mitchell. Brother Terry Mitchell um, rededicates his life to Christ mm -hmm. and um, is asking for restoration to membership. Amen. I Amen. present to you a very own brother, Terry Mitchell. All right. All right, let's start with the head. All right, Brother yes. Terry. Okay. I'm so happy that you've chosen to resubmit yourself to God and to, uh, to rededicate your life to him. That's an important thing. That's something that each one of us need to learn that we should do really every day. Every day. The moment you open your eyes in the morning, Lord, I rededicate all of my being to you. Ooh, every day. You don't have to say it out loud. It'd be good to say it out loud so your wife can hear it, mm. you know, and uh, children if they're around. But with you saying it, when you say it enough times, all of a sudden, this crazy brain of ours kick in. They say, wait a minute. You know, I'm rededicating my life. Maybe I should start acting like I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, and all of a sudden, you start Jeez. finding your walk yeah. that much more pleasant. But I'm so happy that you've decided to do, do that, and your family is going to reap the joy of that as well. Yes, Lord. I'm extending to you on behalf of this great church, Black Bottom, to the, from the deacons, officers, and from the pastor, the right hand of welcome. Mm -hmm. And then the ministry on new disciples will contact you, and then whatever information they have to share with you. It'll be light, easy, and pleasant. And then at a time, we will be extending to you the right hand of fellowship. Mm -hmm. Amen? God bless you, my God brother. Bless God bless you. You, yes, you can wait for the, yes. your family. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Pastor. Um, we have the missus. We have Ariane, Ariane Mitchell. All right. Sister Ariane Mitchell. I know I told her. Sister I Mitchell. Mm -hmm. See, I'm not going to mess around. I'm, I'm going to learn the name now. But I'm yeah, Ari Ariane. 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 Okay. Sister Ariane. Mitchell. <laughs> Look at this pretty little lady. Look, oh, she is so adorable. Hi. Baby, I attracted one little girl. <laughs> You're too late. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm also extending to you, on behalf of this church and the officers, the right hand of, uh, of, uh, of welcome. You, you're coming now for what? Uh, she, mm -hmm, she does re rededicate her life to Christ. Um, oh. She comes on the Christian experience. Okay, good. But she is a candidate of baptism. Oh, Never okay. Never been baptized by a Baptist preacher. Oh, it's fantastic, mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, our ministry on New Disciples will be contacting you as well as with your husband and then let you know uh, what's required, if there's anything, and then we'll move from that. And there will come a time where, uh, like with your husband, we will extend the right hand of fellowship, Okay which means that you have the full privileges as anyone else in this church. Amen? Amen. Uh, God bless you. Praise God. You may have a seat. Oh, she is so adorable. She's so cute. Oh. She coming eventually, yes. Huh? Oh, Pastor, the, the party don't stop. just play with them. Okay. Uh, I know, no. <laughs> Be the baby. The party um, don't stop right there, um, Pastor. Uh, we have young um, uh, Mitchell. His name oh, is Todd Mitchell. Oh, okay, man. Pastor, I was in the back. And Sister Corey Hackley did the um, prayer with him. Oh, uh -huh. my God, I teared up. He is such a studious young man. Oh, right. God, To God be the glory for that. But he comes, um, he accepts Christ as his personal Savior. Amen. Amen. And he is a candidate of oh, baptism. Amen. All right. Beautiful, y'all. Brother Beautiful. Mitchell, you know, I can call you that now. Your brother, Brother Hodge. Mitchell. Mitchell. It's a buddy. Yes. You know, the Bible says that when, uh, when a new saint comes to the Lord, uh, like you're doing, that... Uh, that the angels in heaven are rejoicing. They're up shouting right now, the angels in heaven, right now, because of the decision that you've made. 
you may not understand that right now. As you get older, you'll, you, you'll, you'll get to understand a little bit better. But there's a whole lot of happiness that's going on in heaven right now. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? But you, you're a handsome young man. Yeah. Boy, you want to have trouble with the ladies. I'm telling you. You're <laughs> knocking, knocking down the doors. But God Praise bless you, God. son. And, and uh, again, we're going to be making arrangements to uh, uh, have you in baptism and then, uh, and then to give you the right hand of fellowship. Amen? I'm so happy for you. You may have a seat. All right. All right. The party continues. Okay, Pastor. Yes. Now, uh, still family, but just yes. not in that immediate family. We have young sister Aaliyah Morgan. She is the sister of our... Um, Amaya um, Morgan that was baptized this morning. Yes, so the uh, sister of Amaya. We have Aaliyah Morgan. Okay. Pastor, she comes, um, she accepts Christ as her pe um, personal Savior. Oh. She uh, desires membership, and uh, she too is a candidate of baptism. Amen. God. Amen. The last name is what? Amori? Morgan. 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 Uh huh. Oh, Aaliyah gracious. Morgan. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. Still uh -huh. beautiful. You know, I thought we said Omori. Omori means love. Oh, sorry. love. Morgan. You know, my I'm trying to add some stuff to it. So we got a hope <laughs> right there. <laughs> and we got another saint uh, named Faith. Yes, we do. Right yes, and we're looking for a, a love. Yes. You know, I thought I had one just then, but that's mm -hmm. okay. That's okay. That's right. you come close oh, enough. Yeah. Right. But uh, I'm also extending the right hand of welcome to you. and. The ministry on new disciples will also get in contact with you, and then uh, we'll set a time for a baptism, and and have everything just just going easier for you. Our pastor, before me, used to say that we will set everything in motion. It'll be so easy. It'll be like uh, a hot knife going through soft butter. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's how easy it's going to be. Okay. All Praise right. God. God bless you. All bless right. you. All right. Okay. okay. Well, we're not all done right. yet, Saint Joseph. Right. Okay. Amen. Now, this family, this all, this whole family comes from our very own Daphne Mitchell. These all are right. offsprings. That family there, that whole all to right. the right. Yes. All Isn't that right. She looking like me over there with all the babies. <laughs> <laughs> offsprings. Okay. All right. All right. But um, Pastor, uh, last but certainly not least. Uh -huh. Oh no. Now, all right. That's our sister. We have a sister. Mercedes Johnson. Oh, what a rich name. Yes. All right. Come on down. Sister, Sister, Mercedes Sister Johnson, Johnson desires membership. All right. And she re rededicates her life to Christ. She is the friend of our very own Kay Carroll. Okay. Praise God. Uh, Mercedes Johnson. All right. Sister Mercedes Johnson. I'm going to like calling her whole name, you know, because my wife loves Mercedes. You know, <laughs> she does. <laughs> Love driving. Yeah. But I'm going to send to you as well the uh, right hand of fellowship yes. on behalf of this church, St. Joseph, and the officers and members, and pastor, mm -hmm. and uh, the ministry of new disciples. And I keep saying that because I want you to be aware that there'd be someone calling you. They won't be wor worrying you. They just want to walk you through the process so to make it easy for you. And then uh, there'll come a time when all of that is completed that we'll give you the right hand of fellowship which then gives you all the privileges of this great church. You'll have the same voice as the pastor, the same vote. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Your vote you count the same thing as my vote calls for. That's how much that means. And uh, I'm looking forward to extending that to you. Amen? Amen. All right. Amen. And we've got to get this youth ministry back together, yeah. got going, and yeah. that's it. How, how do they say back in the day we we putting the band back together? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Pastor. Yes. Amen. God Praise bless you, God. dear. Praise Amen. God. You all may go back to your seat mm -hmm. now. Amen. Oh, bless you, Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mm That's good news. That means that St. Joseph is, is coming together. Coming together. Ain't that something? Mm. Only God is able to do that. God is able to do that. Okay, are we through with the candidates? Let everybody say amen. Let everybody say amen. Let 
everybody say amen amen let the church say let the church say let the church say Church, Deaconess, Sisters, and in, in Christ Encouragement Project. So in other words, the Deaconess Ministry has something for you, okay? And it is all about loving God, loving man, and loving his fellowship, okay? So for Resurrection Easter Sunday, which is on April the 9th, 2023, the Deaconess Ministry are asking that all females of St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church I mean, if you just come to church, you bring in family and friends, it don't matter, all females, um, St. Joe's Missionary Baptist Church, to participate in our Easter Pretty Bonnets and Bows Resurrection slash Easter service celebration. Say that two, three times without taking a breath. Okay. <laughs> so again, it's called our Easter Pretty Bonnets and Bows Resurrection slash Easter Sunday celebration on April the 9th of this year. We will know, okay, while we know it's only tradition, wouldn't it be great to see all of us dressed up and wearing a pretty Easter hat, a bonnet, a wrap, fascinator, you know, little hats with the clip on, you know what I'm saying? And our little girls, oh, let's not forget the little girls. Put them on a big pretty bow, you know what I'm saying? But it's all as a symbol of our, rec our recognition of this Resurrection Sunday. So it's all a symbol, but we would like to, come together and just do that in honor of. So, okay, um, remember back in the day when everyone dressed up for church? Yeah. We had Easter programs, um, et cetera, and Easter Sunday dinner. Okay, so come out on Resurrection Sunday and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't forget, love God, love man, and love the fellowship. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. I'm struggling with them hats. So I'm a <laughs> I'm about to get me a little bow or something, but okay, amen. Now, I'm not going to go in detail, but I do want to remi remind everyone that June is our month of uh, church and pastor uh, anniversary celebration, so the month of June. I'm not going into details at this, this Sunday, but just keeping it out there, okay? Prepare ourselves. All right, um, Sister uh, Hackley, are you ready? Announcement from Sister Hackley. You know, she does it so gracefully. Top of the hour. Ow. Okay. We are having a Resurrection Sunday celebration. Yes, it is a short notice. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And we can do this. So I'm asking parents to please see me just for a few minutes after church. Would you be so kind to do this? Would you? Thank you very softly, and have a pretty day. I'm back. Okay, now, now you know it is fourth Sunday. It's my favorite thing to do. Okay, I say let's celebrate you. So if you are celebrating a birthday in the month of March, I say stand up and allow us to celebrate you. Anybody, everybody, birthdays in March. Let's go, let's go, let's go, all you March babies. Yes. 
That's it. Come on, let's go. Okay. All right. We're going to start in the choir. Sister Cynthia. Yes, Lord. Sister Jack. Mackenzie, Sarah, Jacinta. March 2nd. All right. Sister Dawn. What you say? Yes. <laughs> we going off to college yet? Am I missing anybody? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And it's Deacon Lucky. My president. Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Okay, anybody over here? All right, anybody up in the balcony? No, that's it? All right. Let's do it, my friend. get to celebrate anniversaries so if you are celebrating an anniversary in the month of March I say stand up and represent woo woo no come on anybody anybody All right, well, praise God anyway. Well, that month is open if you're thinking about getting married. Praise the Lord. All right, well, this concludes my messy announcements. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. <laughs> I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. All right, thank you. All right, is that everything? Well, we've had a wonderful day. We're, we're a little bit over, but no, right in time because we had so much to do. Thank y'all for being so patient with us and being sure that we're able to lift Jesus in the right way. Amen? Amen. 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 With that, let us uh, have our benediction and we can head out from here. <laughs> Got it all. Sister George, you guys got to get on your toes, man. We got to get put this band back together. This youth ministry is growing, so we got ideas that are coming, and we want to see it all come together with putting our children on a pedestal. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this glorious day. We thank you, God, for all of who you are and what you mean to us. Thank you for what you've done today in your service. And now, as we look to you for our benediction, it is unto he who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the everlasting covenant, through the blood that he shed on Calvary. We pray, God, that you would keep us through that promise, through that covenant, together as a family. Keep us in love as we look to you 
Keep us in love as we look toward each other. Keep us in love as we enjoy the fellowship. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray, and all of your saints shall say together, Amen and Amen. Oh, my God.